there are many important lessons that we can learn from the book of Esther, which we will be reading in two weeks on the holiday of Purim. It contains the story of what could be regarded as the first attempt at a holocaust. And that was the decree of Haman and the king, with the consent of the king Ahasuerus to annihilate the entire Jewish people, men, women, and children on one day, on the 14th of Adar. And um, Mordechai, the Jew, got wind of this, and um, he put on sackcloth and ashes and walked towards the direction of the palace because Esther was the queen. And his uh, idea was, we have to do something about this. And naturally, he turned to Esther. She was the queen. She was in a position to influence King Ahasuerus more so than anybody else. Now, when he got the message to Esther that she should go and plead with the king to save the Jews, he got a very interesting response. Esther said that everybody knows that uh, the law is that if a person is not summoned, if you come into the king's courtyard unsummoned, then he, possibility, he will kill you, he'll execute you. That's punishable by death, unless he stretches out the golden scepter and gives you a pardon. And she said, I haven't been called for 30 days. And then... In response to that, Mordechai really lays his into her and says, don't think that uh, you'll be saved from all the Jews if this should go through because you're in the king's house. And if uh, you are silent at this time, then deliverance will come to the Jews from a different place. But you and your father's house will be lost. And then he added, and who knows if it's not just for a time like this that, that God elevated you to, to the position to become the queen. In other words, it's possible that the very reason you are the queen it's been arranged by divine providence so that you will do something to save the Jews. And in response to that, Esther accepted the uh, challenge. And if, I, if, if I'm lost, I'm lost. The question is, what was the disagreement? Was Esther's position that she's not going to do anything? That she's going to allow all this to happen without intervening? So Rabbi Israel Chait, a number of years ago, explained it this way. He said that, of course, Esther was going to help. Her only point was that if I go unannounced, there's a risk that I'll be killed. And if I'm killed, who's going to help the Jews? So all she meant was that, let me get some time. I'll get an appointment, and I'll come within the framework of the, uh, of the law. It'll be permitted, and then I'll speak to the king. Why should I risk my life on a matter like this? And he said that Mordechai's answer was, to the contrary, you have to risk your life. Because there are times, generally the Jews follow the law of the land. And if we have to see um, a president or some leader, we want to get permission to do it the right way. But he said that there are times when you can't take the cautious road. There are times when you're obligated to even to break the law. Uh, even in spite of the fact that uh, Jews in general, may, you have to keep the law. But there are times, and that is, for example... When there's an emergency, a danger to the very existence of the Jews, if you go about it in a natural way and, um, you know, seek, seek to follow all the rules, then the king will be able to push you aside. He'll get a sense of how important this is to you. But the fact that you're daring, that you break the law, that you put your life on the line, that itself is going to show him that this is so serious. He's not just going to be able to brush you off. And um, that's a very important lesson. I mean, during the Holocaust, there weren't enough Jews that were protesting or going out of their way. <clears throat> so in order to get people's attention sometime, when there's a horrible, horrible thing going on, you just can't go about it in the ordinary way. You have to do something very dramatic and demonstrate to them that this is something you are prepared to fight for. This is something you are even prepared to die for. Okay, that, that one has to have the discernment as to when in general, as I said, we seek to keep the law. But, and, and that too is a big responsibility. We have a responsibility to go and, and protest. And uh, when, when things are being done that are contrary to justice and endanger our lives, certainly. But there may come a time when, in order to get people's attention, you may have to go beyond that and even break the law. So let's pray that we have the wisdom to, to discern, but we always need to be concerned about the welfare of the Jewish people, indeed, the welfare of all of humanity.